So we've all heard the news that Bungie is laying off a ton of people. They're reframing it in di like different various ways where they're like, hey, well, we're firing these people. These people are getting taken into Sony Interactive Entertainment. And then these people are going and making a new studio. But at the end of the day, they're still losing like hundreds of employees because they don't know what they're doing. And they haven't for a while, it seems. And... In the days after the announcement of all of that stuff that happened, there's been some more reporting, some more news that's broken. For example, it's come out that the CEO spent millions of dollars, probably at least $2 million, on collectible vintage cars. These cars cost, you know, eighty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 a piece. And he's done all of that since the acquisition of Bungie, while Bungie was struggling desperately. So it's just a bad look. It's a bad look to be like, all of this is falling apart, but we're still going to throw, I'm still going to throw money at all of this stuff. It's his right to spend his money how he wants to, to spend it. But the age old saying is you get to do what you want to do, but that means I get to make fun of you. It's an old adage, I think from Psalms or Song of Solomon or something, but it, it holds true very much so. If you do something stupid, it's your right, but I get to make fun of you. Um, in the same way that if I show up here, guys, and I'm like, guys, I spent $100,000 on a, a DeLorean and it barely runs, but I think it'll be worth it because in the future, I think Back to the Future is going to make a comeback because Marty will travel to the future and meet me and we'll drive around in it and then we'll do a big promotional tour and the movies will make a resurgence. And you'd be like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, Luke. That doesn't make any sense. And it's, it's like... I'm allowed to spend money in stupid ways, but you get to make fun of me for doing really stupid stuff with my money. It's a bit of a stretch as far as an analogy is concerned, I grant you. But <laughs> if we shift forward, as as a bunch of this, this news has continued to break and people have started to analyze the Bungie situation more, there's been other things that we found out. For example, we found out that these layoffs were planned early this year before the latest release of their, their uh, I forgot the name of the expansion, but the latest expansion that was actually pretty well received. So these layoffs were, were going to happen no matter what. Even if this expansion popped off, people were still losing their jobs. And some people were like, that's ridiculous. They should be able to redeem themselves if they do well. And honestly, I, I'm kind of less sympathetic in this regard, uh, just because if, if a company runs in the red for years, you know, they're just losing money. They make a little bit of money here. They lose more money. They make a little here. They make like continue to lose it. But then they have a really good month and a good expansion and they shoot up here. They've still lost all of this money like this is still a catastrophic failure you can't have 10 missed swings and then one good one and still claim you did well you can't go onto the golf course and then you know hit hit you know on on like two or three and four par holes hit 10 strokes to each hole racking up like uh, a whatever total of like 60 strokes by by hole seven, but then you get really lucky and you hit a hole in one. You don't get to then claim that you're one of the best golfers in the world. It just doesn't work that way. You know, it, it just doesn't. You got lucky or you did a really good job. You did some great work and you did have a really well-received expansion, but it doesn't just negate all of this. You still lost tons of money for years and years and years and years. So I think this was somewhat inevitable, which is part of what makes it all the more unacceptable that a lot of these, these stories are coming out describing how Bungie reportedly just straight up was misleading uh, Sony or, or Bungie was just misleading Sony about uh, what they were capable of. A damning new report claims that Bungie misled Sony about its financial position ahead of its acquisition by PlayStation. The studio's management has come under scrutiny following a second round of mass layoffs within a year that didn't even spare long-term or long-time senior executives. Now, many former employees are laying the blame solely on CEO Pete Parsons. And here's the deal. As a CEO of a company, you don't get to eat, like have your cake and eat it too. You don't get to get the big payday, but skirt all responsibility when things go badly. Bungie has been a disaster for years at this point. They have struggled to make any semblance of profitability ever since. Um, like the, the early, early days of Destiny 2. Steven 
reports this. I spoke to ex Bungie workers about yesterday's big cuts. They said, quote, this round was in the works prior to final shape. So again, it was in the works before it was going to happen no matter what. Feeling is Bungie bosses oversold the company to, to Sony. Not selling would have been worse. Source, the alternative or the alternate his or alternate history I can read is insolvency. And this is actually a really, really interesting thing because I saw Sony actually getting flack for these layoffs. I saw people blaming Sony for coming in and firing all these people and doing all this when they were supposed to just buy them and give them the support they needed. And it's built on the faulty premise that everybody deserves to keep their job. The fact of the matter is somebody like Pete, the CEO and much of the management over at Bungie, in my humble opinion, should have lost their jobs when they were bought by Sony. I think that probably could have turned this around, but instead they kept the guy at the helm who had regularly been steering the ship into storms and rocks and, and uh, you know, reefs under the surface. Like he was totally incompetent, didn't know what he was doing, most likely because he was too busy ordering classic cars on his phone and didn't care that much about the day-to-day -day operations over at the company. I don't think it's fair to give Sony crap for all of this. I really don't. Sony came in and they, they tried to give them the money they needed to be successful because frankly, Bungie probably would have shut down years ago and like on actual belly up, Destiny 2 is dead, Marathon is dead, the company implodes. They would have been in that position unless Sony came in and gave them a ton of cash to live on for the next few years. But now they're they're suffering the consequences of it because the deal never really made sense. I do think you can blame Sony for making a really bad purchase. No part of this makes sense. They were not worth $3 billion. Why they kept Bungie leadership in charge after years of struggles doesn't make any sense, like at all. Um, I think you're right under Gamer. They had the general approach that, hey, Sony, like they, they or Bungie rather, they made like Halo, they know what they're doing. So. I bet, I bet they'll figure it out. And there's been other stories of how they brought Bungie in, you know, to help with other help with other games. For example, they brought them in to give feedback on the Last of Us online game. You guys remember all of that stuff where Naughty Dog allegedly found Bungie's feedback on the binned Last of Us 2 multiplayer extremely helpful. But at the end of the day, it was actually Bungie's feedback, like, that, that made them decide to can it, that it wasn't going to work. Quote, Bungie gave Naughty Dog feedback that Naughty Dog found extremely helpful when making what was likely a very smart decision to not go all in on live service or on a service game. When asked pointedly about the cancellation by a fan, quote, people lamenting this cancellation should really look at the history of single player studios pivoting to make live service games such as Anthem, Suicide Squad, Marvel's Avengers, Redfall, and so on. And I think that it's, it's just fascinating to see that Bungie was being used by Sony to determine their live service plans. Meanwhile, Bungie had troubles at home and seemingly didn't really know what they were doing themselves. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, you're, uh, my, my, I own a restaurant. My restaurant's struggling. So I'm going to hire a chef to come in and give us info and ideas on uh, how we can improve the menu. So I'm going to go find a guy that runs a restaurant himself. And if you vetted it even a little, you'd see customer reviews on Google for that guy's restaurant are horrible. People are like the steak is always undercooked. Um, the quality is super inconsistent. Sometimes you get an amazing steak or amazing burger or something. Other times it's raw and disgusting and rancid and rotten. I would look at that and be like, okay, this guy probably, I shouldn't be giving him all of the attention he's getting. I probably shouldn't put that much trust in him because he doesn't have the track record to back it up, at least not anymore. Maybe at one time he was like an amazing chef, but now he's just kind of like really inconsistent making diner food, you know? No shade to diner food. I really like diner food for the record, but you get what I'm saying. I think Sony just across the board, I, I think was blinded by their ambition to have successful live service games and they were willing to kind of look past reality in the pursuit of those big dollars that they were hoping it could make. So I think they paid a lot for Bungie and then they're like, well, we're in kind of too deep now. Jim Ryan negotiated that deal. Jim Ryan was like, okay, you guys are the experts. You guys run Destiny, a huge game, uh, Destiny 2, and, and like, you guys really know what you're doing. 
so let's let's see what you got and we'll let you guys basically determine where we go and where the the focus lies and it's been an unmitigated disaster and when we say like there's reports that sony misled uh or sony was misled by bungie about its financials and stuff what does that practically mean practically what it means is that bungie told sony that they were working on marathon they were working on this spin-off game and then of course they were working on destiny 2 expansions and they told Sony, you guys buy us, we'll get the cash we need, we can get all of that done, all of that out, then you'll have three behemoth franchises and releases pouring money in. We would expect if the performance is similar to the original Destiny or Destiny 2, then we'll have it pop off in this way, in this way, in this way, you'll make these this many billions of dollars, and we can do it, we just need the money to expand. And for some reason, Sony believed them. And this is made all the more interesting because it's reported by Tom Warren over on The Verge, Microsoft considered bu acquiring Bungie and Sega to bolster Xbox Game Pass internal emails show. But what's interesting about this is of course that they decided not to pursue Bungie. And you might wonder why they decided. Well, look at this. Bungie, now a Sony-owned studio, was on the list with Microsoft's internal document stating that the, quote, acquisition of Bungie will include securing valuable IP, Destiny and its community, and integration of its dev and line ops infrastructure into Xbox Game Studios, end quote. Microsoft had identified, though, a, quote, high burn rate risk, end quote, for Bungie alongside NetEase's $100 million minority stake in investment in 2018. It also noted that Destiny was one of the biggest or highest hours generating titles on console Game Pass. Microsoft was identifying big issues in terms of the business side of their operations. They would just churn through cash and eventually sometimes have hits. But they burned through a lot of it. As Tom Warren says, Microsoft was eyeing up acquiring Bungie in 2021, but flagged a high burn rate it looks like Sony was willing to overlook the amount of cash Bungie burns through to pursue live service games, and Sony has since cut back its live service ambitions. Again, I think it was just a case of people like Jim Ryan getting the, the dollar sign glasses put on, seeing everything through the lens of how much money they were going to make if live services popped off, and that blinded them to the realities of just how risky it is, how unlikely it would be. And I, I, I mean... It just doesn't make any sense if you look at it critically. But when you think of it from the perspective of an executive that's thinking they're going to be making billions on this, you can start to see why they, they maybe overlooked some things and trusted them when they said it. But at the end of the day, the fact that Pete is still CEO after almost running the company into the ground, because again, people familiar with the matters have been saying it's very, very possible that Bungie would have gone belly up years ago, like two years ago if they were not bought. They were that on the edge. If they were not bought, they would have gone completely out of business and everyone would lose their jobs. The only reason why they still exist at all is because Sony came in and was willing to basically pay out the ass to let them dick around for a couple more years, let the CEO go buy a bunch of cars and and do whatever he wants to do just because they, they were trusting that they could eventually figure it out. But there is no way to spin this where Bungie was a good get. Bungie was basically a waste of three and a half billion dollars. And it, it's it, what's funny is it was supposed to counter the the acquisition of like an Activision. It, it was something they purchased thinking, OK, Microsoft's about to go on a buying spree. We need to buy up something of our own. And so they grabbed Bungie. And maybe that was another piece of it. Maybe they were so worried about Microsoft buying up Bungie for themselves or buying up all these other live service studios that they just panicked and kind of rushed this deal across the finish line. I'm I'm not sure. You, you can't spend three and a half billion dollars and then have that company, that thing you bought for three and a half billion dollars, lose money and argue that was a good purchase. Like it'd be one thing if they were returning like, we're only getting the hundred million dollars a quarter. It's going to take us a decade plus to get our money back. That's one thing. They are losing money. <laughs> that's not, that's not an investment. That's a slaughter. You know, that that's a different thing entirely, differently entirely. Now, as I said, I think Colin Moriarty, um, he put this well, I saw this clip pop up on my feed and I thought it was interesting. 
So I just want you to uh, to hear what he has to say because it's from an interesting perspective as somebody that, of course, has a lot of familiarity with the industry. Just to reiterate, like Sony should have never bought this team. And what one thing that I don't see people circulating very much is that without Sony, Bungie would be fucked right now. Like way worse than this. Mm -hmm. Would have either had to, because they, they've been living on Sony's money since basically being purchased. They have not created requisite revenue from what they were purchased for anywhere close to it. And this is the thing that I think people are missing because people are like, oh, just give it time and they'll marathon will turn things around or whatever. I'm like, maybe, but it's not quite that simple. If you spend between three and $4 billion on a team who is not making anywhere close to revenue to make up for that over even years, they're in the red, as he says in the letter. Yeah. And so it's it's more than that now, right? So it's it's not just the price of buying in. It's Sony supporting the team's existence in the red. You have lost a bunch of the talent who is who is gone. Now you have Sony people because the word on the street is that, and I think um, uh, what's the giant bomb journalist name? Why can't I think of his name? The Jeff the, Grubb. Uh, Grubb. Jeff Grubb. Uh, he had said something like, basically, Herman Holst is like in charge of the team now. Now, now I wouldn't be surprised about that, but this is what we talked about in the beginning. What will be the purpose of 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 an acquisition of Sony under this umbrella without Bungie's talent. Then you just have Sony running the company that they had originally purchased for their expertise. This has been a really bad deal. And again, it just makes me put on my conspiracy theorist hat. And I, you know, I, I need like a tinfoil hat. That's what I need. I need to get that as a new prop. That's what we got to do. But like, it makes me want to put that on because again, according to Sony, Jim Ryan just decided to retire in the middle of a console generation, right before all of this crap hits the fan. This is once again, I think a, a reaffirmation of, of what the sneaking suspicion has been, which is that Jim Ryan headed up this purchase. Jim Ryan headed up the acquisition of all these other studios. Um, like the guys that are making fair games Haven or the guys making Concord, the uh, firewalk studios, they've spent billions of dollars pushing this live service mess. And the only thing they have to show for it is a really solid launch for hell divers two. And since then it's trailed off a good amount, still a fun game, still really, really good. And I think it's, it's worth popping in every once in a while, but it's not a game that you're going to be playing for years and years nonstop. You know, it's, it's no call of duty. Tell you what, it just isn't. And I think Jim Ryan, that was his whole thing is that he pushed it so hard. That was going to be his legacy. And if it worked, Sony could have blown up and been one of the most profitable companies in all of gaming, but instead their margins tightened because all of a sudden they had acquired companies like Bungie who were just running in the red regularly with no consequence, nothing. And so what does he do? He just retires. He says, tell you how old chaps. I know he doesn't sound like that, uh, but he goes back to the UK and he retires with all his stock options and he's fine. And he doesn't suffer any of the blowback for, for any of this stuff. At the very least, somebody like Phil Spencer, he eats a, a lot of, I almost said eats a lot of crap. That sounds weird. He, he takes a lot of crap because when they make a decision, which I think is like a bad one, like the, the disposal of Tango, uh, Tango Gameworks, I think that was a very bad decision. The other studios, like shutting down uh, Arcane Austin, I get that. They made a really, really bad game. And apparently they lost most of the talent that made that studio worth anything while they were making Redfall because nobody from the original team that did like Prey wanted to work on a Redfall, so they all left, and all that was left were like newbies who were trying their best and really putting a lot of work in, but it just wasn't as valuable of a team as it used to be. So at least that one I think makes sense. Tango had lost some talent, but even if they had lost all their talent, I just think it is a very bad look optically for the rest of your team, for all of those other thousands of developers around the world, I think it's a really bad look to be like, you guys had our best game last year. You're fired. <laughs> I think that's a bad look. And I think they should avoid that. And so I, I gave them crap for that. A lot of people gave Phil Spencer crap for that. And I think rightly so. Did he just happen to retire a week before the announcement? No. Now, 
to be fair, he didn't go out and do any real interviews. He didn't really talk about it. He just kind of waited for everybody to get, uh, you know, bored and move on. And largely people have after the summer showcase. But at least he's like sticking it out and he'll like he doesn't run away and just retire before there's blowback for some of those decisions. Whereas Jim Ryan, again, he refused to do interviews with any like actual gamers. He refused to talk about any of this stuff. It seemed like he had active contempt for gamers. He just saw them as customers and that's it. And I, I think it's a much better industry without him here, in my opinion. I always said Jim Ryan didn't seem like a gamer. He seemed like an alien wearing a human mask and also like a a corporate bigwig suit who was primarily concerned with trying to maximize the bottom line at all costs. And I think we saw that. And he ran the company into the ground as a result. And uh, then he just happened to bail right as all the crap was about to hit the fan. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, dude. <laughs> you know, I, I don't think he'll be missed. People actively miss Sean Layden. People think back to the days of Sean Layden doing announcements, you know, uh, at E3. People think back to that one time where Phil Spencer and Sean Layden and Reggie fils they went out on stage at, at E... No, I think it was the Game Awards. Would this ever happen with Jim Ryan? It's the guys like that run active competitors. Nintendo's a little bit different to be fair, but you have the head of PlayStation and the head of Xbox standing side by side, side by side. Cause it's just freaking video games at the end of the day. This isn't like some sort of grand fight, you know, with, with, you know, lives on the line. This is like video games. It's an industry. There are people who have their livelihoods you know, on the line, if you lay them off or fire them and stuff like that. But it's not like, you know, this is international diplomacy. It's, it's video games. And to see like the people willing to, that they run these companies willing to come together, stand on the same stage and talk openly about their love and care for the industry. That is just something you, you don't see now. And it's such a shame. It's such a shame. All this to say the Bungie situation Sony dug them out of the hole for a while, paid the way basically for uh, for them to stay operational for a couple of years. But you just, you can only do that for so long. And now it's finally hitting the fan and they got to figure out a way to make it make sense. And so Bungie's imploding and they're cleaning house with a lot of people, but seemingly the CEO is still staying behind somehow. And... We'll see what the future looks like for them, but I don't, uh, probably not too bright. <laughs> probably not too bright. Because it sounds like Bungie is basically just going to become another Sony PlayStation Studios. Uh, and that's about it. It's not really going to change much after that. It's it's not going to be an independent team anymore. They'll do the bidding of all of these other higher ups within Sony, and that's about it. So, like, I would bet you money that we probably see Destiny 2 devs shifted over to start working on helping the gorilla like um gorilla games whatever monster hunter ripoff clone that they're working on because herman holst runs it and herman holst is like obsessed with horizon because it's from his home studio i mean i'm, I'm not saying it doesn't make sense but it's just kind of cringe because <laughs> i don't i don't think that's gonna pop off either i'd love to be wrong i'd love for there to be more games that we can eat up, but uh, you know, I wouldn't expect it. I highly doubt about that marathon project. Well, after I heard that it was going hero shooter, I was like, okay. I mean, when I hear hero shooter, I know Joraptor was like, there are some good ones. Yeah, sure. There's also a whole lot of bad ones. And the reason a lot of these studios love hero shooters is because they can get away with either charging 20 bucks a pop for the heroes, or they can get away with doing season passes for each of the heroes every single season uh, or every single, you know, three month period or so between character drops. And so they just eat it up, they eat it up. And then skins, people love those skins, you know, they, they buy the crap out of them. So he took my thing.